Meet our hero, Shin Yujun. He's your typical guy in his 20s, living the dream, if your dream involves gaming nonstop in a dark room. His obsession? War of the Gods, a fantasy RPG perfect for grinders and pay-to-win fanatics. And Yujun? He's the king of pay-to-win. When he logs in, his avatar struts through town, decked out in golden armor and wielding the legendary Azure Edge, a sword so rare it looks like it could slice through reality. But instead of earning it through battle, Yujun earned it the old-fashioned way, with his credit card. His friends? Not impressed. They roast him for spending real money on virtual gear instead of something practical like booze or dates. But Yujun's got his priorities. Why not turn all that free time and cash into digital glory? Enter his in-game persona, F2P Gamer, the ultimate irony since he's anything but free to play. Still, for Yujun, it's worth every penny. The feeling of strolling through the forest, cleaving through level 1 boars and his god-tier gear? Priceless. The game's only real downside? It's basically a ghost town. What was once a bustling virtual world has dwindled to a handful of hardcore players. And there's Shin Yujun, logging in again, eyes bleary from yet another 24-hour marathon. A player waves at him from across the town square, asking, What are you up to? Yujun, or F2P Gamer, casually replies, Just woke up. Pulled an all night again. Another player, Hot Pink Rabbit, energetically asks, Have you eaten yet? Of course he hasn't. There's grinding to be done. He mutters something about ordering delivery to save time. Curious, Yujun asks what the group's up to. Hot Pink Rabbit responds, Just chatting, which explains why they spend more time in town than questing. That's when Hongdae Fashion Joseph chimes in, teasing, didn't you say you were going to quit yesterday? But everyone knows Joseph says that all the time, yet here he is still logged in and holding the record for longest login time. Yujun smirks, yeah well if you quit then so will I. The banter between addicts is as predictable as ever. Soon, they're joined by extreme role player Josie and First Sword, whose name alone tells you all you need to know. Finally, there's only I don't have a cat, Yujun's closest friend both in-game and IRL. Together, this crew forms an unstoppable team capable of taking on any raid or dungeon. Joseph, seeing everyone logged in, asks the group what they should do. He suggests tackling the toughest raids, but hot pink rabbit groans. I hate raids, especially the long ones, and with good reason. The hardest ones take forever to complete and are nearly impossible without a well. War of the Gods was never even a good game to begin with. Someone mutters under their breath. And yet, here they all are, stubbornly throwing their time, energy, and cold, hard cash at this terribly made RPG. They've already sunk too much into it to turn back now. Extreme role player Josian, always the dramatic one, speaks up next, we should conquer it. The harder the raid, the sweeter the victory, when we finally clear it as a team. He then shifts focus to F2P with a knowing grin. By the way, did you make a killing with that Bitcoin thing? Cue F2P's grand celebration. He throws his arms in the air and triggers a flashy, emoting game. Yeah, baby. It's a well-known fact among the group that Yujun made bank with crypto. But somehow, this is news to Josian, who's standing there gobsmacked. Wait, seriously? He says, barely believing his ears. This windfall explains F2P willingness to sink loads of cash into a supposedly free-to-play game. Ah, the irony. And just when the group is mid-celebration, a sudden system notification flashes across everyone's screens, grabbing their attention. Ding! A real-time announcement appears, something none of them have ever seen before. The message reads, Dear users, Nice to meet you all for the first time. I have a brief announcement. War of the Gods has been selected for a contest, and it's all thanks to you. The group is stunned, with Hongdae muttering. Is that the admin's voice? Hot Pink Rabbit, ever the skeptic, blurts out. So wait, does this mean the server's shutting down? And right on cue, the admin's voice follows up. We are truly sorry, but yes, the server is scheduled to close down the game completely. Silence. Absolute, deafening silence. The group is completely floored by the news. Extreme role player Josian, clearly frustrated, yells at the admin. But F2P spent a small fortune maxing out his gear to god level. What happens to all our time? Our money. The system responds in its calm, robotic tone. Fear not. All money used on paid content will be reimbursed with rewards proportional to your contributions, and anyone who's invested their time will also receive compensation. Josian is baffled. Wait, what kind of compensation do we get when you're about to pull the plug on the game? But before he can make sense of it all, a new screen flashes up, a countdown timer. 
Five minutes until the game goes offline. The group goes wild. Five minutes? Are they serious? Hot pink rabbit panics, shouting about how the developers were already terrible, and now they're shutting down the servers without warning. And Shin Yujun, he just stands there, speechless. The game that defined his life is now in its final moments, but deep down, he knew this day would come. He sighs, trying to rationalize it to himself. Low player count, poor revenue. Of course it would shut down eventually. Still, it's hard to accept that this will be the last time he'll ever see his beloved avatar. F2P. The countdown ticks down mercilessly. 10 seconds, 9 seconds, and there they stand. Yu Jun and his team, surrounded by piles of loot that glow brilliantly, bathing the scene in shimmering light. 3, 2, 1, and then nothing. The game doesn't shut down. Instead, everything freezes, and in the distance, an eerie figure emerges. A woman flickering in a blue light, wearing an elegant dress. Her name tag reads Nell. Is this the admin? The name sounds oddly familiar to F2P, and his fingers race across the keyboard as he types. Are you the admin? And what is going on here? Nell, with an enigmatic smile, replies, I just wanted to personally thank you, F2P, for all the time and money you've dedicated to the game. Yujun's eyebrows shoot up in confusion. Thank him? I didn't spend money for you. He types quickly. I did it to power up my character. It wasn't a donation. Nell chuckles softly, her voice echoing across the frozen world. With all the money you spent, I was able to gather the funds needed to enter a special contest, she explains cryptically. F2PI's narrow, baffled. Contest? What contest? He frantically tries to piece together what she's talking about, having no recollection of any in-game contest that would lead to such an abrupt shutdown. Nell only offers a cryptic smile. I can't disclose that information but I want to give you a special reward for all your contributions. Yujun scoffs at the screen. A reward doesn't exactly mean much now that the game is dying, but curiosity gets the better of him, and he asks what this mysterious reward is. Nell's expression becomes serious as she leans closer to the screen. What I can tell you is this. Whatever life throws your way, accept it. It is crucial for your survival. And with a playful wink and a soft whisper, the game world shatters. Nell disappears, the screen fades to black, and suddenly everything powers down. Yujun blinks at his pitch-black monitor, wondering what just happened. Was it all a glitch? Did the whole system crash? Before he can reach for the power button, the monitor blinks back on, and a new message sits ominously in front of him. The change shall now commence. Please prepare for the imminent shock. Yujun's heart races, fear gripping him like a vice. The screen's glow floods the room, and in an instant, he feels it, the unmistakable sensation of being pulled. His entire body starts to contort, bend, and warp, as if he's being dragged into the screen itself. The message flashes again, this time in bold letters. You have received the special privilege as a gift. Inventory transfer commencing. All items soul-bound and synchronizing. The data download timer appears in the corner. Transfer completion estimated in 5 years, 8 days, 5 hours, and 32 minutes. Shin Yujun feels his consciousness blur, his real-world body merging with his in-game self. This isn't just a reward, it's a transformation. The War of the Gods can now truly begin. We find ourselves in a mysterious dimension, an endless, swirling purple void called the Orden Palace. This is the realm of the Divine, where the lower gods reside, known as the Divine Realm. Suspended in the void is a massive leaderboard, glowing brightly as it updates. A crowd of gods, each with their own unique appearance and powers, gathers around, all eyes locked on the rankings. At the very top of the board sits the name War of the Gods, with the player name Nell proudly displayed in first place. Whispers and murmurs ripple through the gods. This War of the Gods is the competition that Nell referred to when she announced the shutdown of her game, a competition of unimaginable importance among the lower deities. It's that time of year again when gods from all walks of divinity participate, but this time, the unthinkable has happened. Nell, a mere seventh grade god, has taken the top spot. As the gods around her exchange surprised glances, Nell thinks back to the reason behind her victory, Shin Yujun, the player who single-handedly made this possible. Nell's game, War of the Gods, was never just for fun, it was a means to an end. She needed funds to participate in this mysterious contest. And so she designed the game to be impossibly difficult, 
enticing players to buy limited edition items and in-game perks in a desperate bid to conquer the challenges. But it wasn't easy. Most players gave up in frustration, refusing to pour money into a game that seemed impossible to beat. The game's unpopularity grew, and the leaderboard seemed out of reach. But then, there was F2P Gamer, the player created by Shin Yujun. He somehow fell head over heels for the game Nell crafted, pouring all his Bitcoin wealth into it. Limited edition shoulder armor, high-grade concentration mana potions, flame-resistant outerwear, boots of swiftness, the legendary dragon's horn. If Nell created it, F2P bought it. Thanks to Yujun's relentless spending and unwavering dedication, Nell managed to skyrocket to the top of the leaderboard, amassing enough funds to secure her victory. The gods look on in awe, but Nell feels nothing but gratitude. The fact that Yujun did all this alone, it's astounding. He's an ordinary young man, of Korean descent, single, orphaned at a young age, and with no wealthy background. And yet, he has become her greatest benefactor. Nell feels incredibly fortunate to have Shin Yujun on her side, and she intends to keep it that way. That's why she blessed him with a gift. As a lower god, she knows Earth faces many challenges. So bestowing such power and inventory to Yujun isn't just a reward. It's vital for his survival. Back on Earth, beneath a bright blue sky and surrounded by a sea of vibrant green trees, sunlight shines down on a lone figure, a figure that looks eerily familiar. It's Shin Yujun, but not quite. He looks like his in-game avatar, F2P. He sits up from the grass, rubbing his sore neck as he scans his surroundings in disbelief. This place, it feels so familiar. Then it hits him. This is the tutorial forest from War of the Gods. The same ruins, the same landscape. He blinks a few times, trying to process the realization. Suddenly, a blue system alert screen pops up right in front of his face, startling him. He flinches in surprise, momentarily disoriented. A floating window in real life? Is this for real? He reads the message. Synchronization complete. Inventory transferred. Secondary privileges received. Trait. Composure successfully activated. Yujun wants to freak out, to let out a scream, or even run, but he can't. He's been given the trait composure, which grants him a sense of calm, overriding any panic. He stands there, steady and clear-headed despite the chaos, rubbing his head as he tries to piece together what's happening. The last thing he remembers is sitting in front of his computer, then everything going black. Is this supposed to be the gift Nell talked about? The perk? He glances down at himself, flexing his fingers and taking in every detail of his appearance. It's just like his character, his beloved F2P. From the armor to the sword to the very look of his face, it's all the same. And now, it seems he's living in the very world he once played. Astonishment fills his eyes as the reality of his situation settles in. The game is no longer just a game. He quickly pulls up a status screen to check his character details. The display reads, Player name, Shin Yuju, Level 1, Special Perk, Composure, Title, Legendary Item Collector, Equip Effects Increased by 15%, Stats, Plus 5 to All, Yujun blinks, barely able to believe his eyes. The title, Legendary Item Collector? He's never seen that before, especially on a character that's only level 1. Could this mean that once he equips all his character slots with legendary gear, he'll gain a permanent 15% boost to his stats? The potential is insane, his fingers trembling with anticipation. He quickly opens up his inventory to see what treasures lie within. And what he finds is jaw-dropping. His entire stash space is maxed out, filled to the brim with all the limited edition items he painstakingly collected back when he was just a regular gamer. Rare armor sets, potions, trinkets, all of it right there in front of him. But there's one catch. They all have a restriction level of 300. Yujun groans. Of course, he has this arsenal of overpowered items, but he can't use any of them. Figures. He shakes his head, trying to make sense of everything. Is he truly inside the game? Or is this some strange new reality? All his levels, skills, everything has been reset. And yet, everything around him feels so real, so immersive, it's hard to distinguish game from life. Nell's words flash through his mind. I will make sure you survive. Don't think too hard about it. Easier said than done. Suddenly, a system notification pops up, demanding his attention. Please select the difficulty of the tutorial. Two options are presented to him. The first is the familiar den of wolves, which he's conquered countless times before. Easy stuff. The second option, however, is something much more intimidating. Hell mode. 
a challenge packed with hordes of undead skeletons rising from the ground. He's never managed to beat this level before, but the rewards are rumored to be unimaginable for those who do. Yujun hesitates, considering his options. If this were just a game, he'd throw himself at hell mode without a second thought. You can always respawn, right? But this feels like real life, and there's no telling if death here means starting over or ending everything for good. It's like playing in hardcore mode, where every decision is a matter of life and death. Before selecting a difficulty, Yujun decides to do one last check of his inventory to see if there's anything he can equip. He rummages through the items, and his eyes catch a glow. Something is lighting up. It's the super novice set, wearable at level 1. A grin spreads across his face. This set is perfect. It grants absurdly high stats for anyone under level 5. Equipping two pieces boosts critical strike chance by 50%, and the full four-piece set enhances attack power and defense to insane levels. This is his ticket to beating Hell Mode. With a quick click, he selects the Super Novice set. Glowing orbits of light circle around him as each piece of armor automatically equips itself, fitting snugly onto his form. He can feel the power coursing through him. This is it. The key to taking down the undead hordes and conquering the most challenging difficulty of the tutorial. Confident and prepared, he selects the Hell Mode difficulty. Another screen immediately pops up. Choose your weapon. But Yujun's already ahead of the game. He's got the best sword for any player under level 5 in his inventory. So he skips the selection. Instantly, another notification blinks across the screen. Since you have not selected a weapon, your rewards will be greatly increased. Perfect. More risk, more reward. The forest around him shifts, becoming darker and more foreboding as the tutorial begins. The ground trembles slightly, and an eerie mist rolls in, creeping around his feet. The game may be starting, but to Yujun, it feels more like a true adventure, and one he's ready to face head on. With a deep breath and steely resolve, Shin Yujun ventures into the dangerous forest, ready to face whatever hell mode has in store. As our hero approaches the dark, ominous forest, a chilling wind rustles through the dense trees, and he can sense the danger that lies ahead. The howling of beasts echoes through the night, and before he knows it, wolves leap out from the shadows, ambushing Shin Yujun from the side. Reacting quickly, he spins around, narrowly dodging their slashing claws. The wolves close in, hungry for blood, and Yujun knows he needs to strike back fast if he's to survive. With a burst of speed, the wolves lunge at him, but he grips his sword tightly and swings with full force. The blade cuts through the air and slices clean through all of them in one fluid motion, reducing the pack to lifeless pieces in a single blow. Yujun stands there, stunned for a moment, marveling at the sheer power of his sword and the effects of the super novice set. Playing the game was one thing, he thinks, but fighting these creatures in person, it's on a whole new level. Just as he's about to savor his victory, the ground trembles as the alpha wolf barrels toward him, teeth bared, ready to avenge its fallen pack. Yujun barely has time to react, but instead of swinging his sword, he clenches his fist and drives it straight into the alpha wolf's gut. The creature is sent flying backward, tumbling and skidding to a stop. Yujun stares at his own arm in disbelief. His strength is overwhelming. In his old life, he was barely able to swat a fly, but now he's punching wolves like a seasoned warrior. The alpha wolf, determined not to fall so easily, staggers back to its feet, letting out a menacing growl. But with one clean strike of his sword, Yujun dispatches it swiftly, ending the threat for good and emerging victorious over the entire pack. The battle leaves him surprised by how calm and collected he feels, unbothered by facing these ferocious creatures. Must be the composure trait at work, he thinks, grateful for the mental clarity as much as his new strength. With no time to waste, he knows he has to keep moving, the longer he stays in one zone, the harder it becomes. He dashes through the forest with newfound speed and agility, making his way to zone level 2. The landscape shifts to that of a ghostly cemetery, the air thick with the scent of damp earth and decay. A purple sky looms above, and ravens flock beneath the bright full moon, their calls echoing through the night. All around him are worn and crumbling gravestones, marking the resting places of countless souls. His objective is clear. Find the golden key hidden somewhere within this graveyard. But he knows from experience that it's not the key itself that's the challenge. It's dealing with the undead that rise from the graves to defend it. Having faced this level before, he remembers the key rule. Smash the skeletons' heads, or they'll just keep coming back. That's a mistake only newbies make, 
leading to their inevitable downfall. Yujun steals himself, knowing he has to avoid being overwhelmed by the endless waves of skeletons. He starts navigating through the cemetery, slicing down any undead that block his path. There's no point in trying to kill every last one. They'll just rise again. Instead, he focuses on finding the one thing that matters, the unbroken tombstone where the golden key is hidden. With a sharp eye and quick movements, Yujun spots the unbroken tombstone. With one powerful swing, he shatters it to pieces, revealing the golden key buried within. Bingo, he mutters, snatching the key up, but before he can celebrate, a towering skeletal boss creeps toward him, its eyes glowing with malice. The creature bites down on Yujun's armor, but it barely leaves a scratch. His gear is just too strong. Wasting no time, Yujun unleashes a devastating area of effect, Oe, attack, sending the skeleton and its minions flying back, gaining much needed distance from the horde. He quickly pulls up his inventory, making sure to secure the golden key in its proper slot. He remembers something crucial. Zone level 2 has no time limit, and the endlessly reviving skeletons are perfect for grinding experience. If played right, this could be a massive boost for his stats. And so, with a strategic grin, Yujun decides to stick around. He starts systematically cutting down the skeletons, knowing they'll just keep coming back, an endless supply of enemies to level up on before moving forward. And so he grinds, slaying the undead one by one, steadily growing stronger for the challenges that lie ahead. It takes Shin Yujun nearly half the day to finally crush every last one of the undead skeletons, smashing their skulls to ensure they don't come back to life. He lets out a tired but triumphant battle cry, exhausted from the relentless grind. But just as he catches his breath, a screen pops up in front of him, reward greatly increased. One of the secret bonuses, if you manage to clear all the monsters in Zone 2, your rewards become even greater. A smile spreads across his face. All that effort was worth it after all. With the cemetery now completely cleared, it's time for our hero to push deeper into the forest to face the final challenge, the werewolf. Who knew running around slaying hundreds of skeletons would wear you out, he mutters to himself. But that's the life of an RPG grinder, where endurance is king. Tired and in need of a break, Yujun decides to recover a bit before advancing to the next level. As he moves cautiously through the trees, he stumbles upon a portal stone, the landmark where the boss fight should take place. But something feels off. There's no boss to be found. He wonders if the game is bugged, or maybe he's triggered some kind of glitch. Just as confusion sets in, a loud crash shakes the ground, and out of nowhere, a massive figure descends from the sky, landing right where Yujun stands. He instinctively rolls out of the way, narrowly dodging the ambush. Dust and smoke fill the area, shrouding the creature's form in mystery. A low, menacing growl pierces the silence, and as the dust clears, Shin Yujun comes face to face with the final boss, the werewolf. The beast stands tall, towering over him, its gray fur bristling. It's a level 55 monster, but Yujun quickly notes that its fur is gray, not silver, which means it's not a rare variant. The werewolf's eyes glow red, locking onto Yujun with a fierce hunger, ready to pounce. But thanks to the composure trait, Yujun remains calm and focused, unfazed by the beast's intimidating presence. He takes a stance, gripping his sword tight, preparing for a fight to the death. In a flash, the werewolf lunges forward with incredible speed, too fast for Yujun to react. The attack lands directly, sending him flying back into a tree with bone-rattling force. He crashes hard but quickly regains his footing, stunned by the creature's agility. Before he can fully collect himself, the werewolf is already charging, its claws aimed right for his chest. Yujun instinctively blocks, his super novice armor absorbing the brunt of the attack. The blow is heavy, but his defense holds, and the impact shatters the werewolf's claws, rendering them useless. Now cornered, the creature only has one move left, its most dangerous attack, the bite. The werewolf prepares for its final move, teeth bared, lunging at Yujun's neck. But Yujun's faster. With one precise strike, he drives his sword deep into the beast's heart, using his armored hands to block the snapping jaws. The blade pierces straight through, landing a critical hit, and the werewolf lets out a pain howl before collapsing to the ground in defeat. Yujun breathes heavily, victorious. A system notification appears, congratulating him. You have successfully cleared the Hell difficulty tutorial. The tutorial will end once you step through the portal stone. 
The portal has opened, shimmering in the distance, signaling the end of this brutal test. Fortunately, thanks to the super novice equipment, Yujun managed to overcome the hardest challenge the tutorial had to offer. However, there's a bittersweet feeling about it. The moment he steps through that portal, he'll gain a massive amount of bonus experience points, leveling up so much that he won't be able to wear this powerful gear anymore due to its level restrictions. But before he proceeds, a thought crosses his mind. The Golden Key. This key has a special purpose. To open a hidden treasure chest containing rare loot. Determined to find it, Yujun makes his way back to the cemetery, heading to one of the hidden dungeons buried beneath the gravestones. After searching, he locates the treasure chest, a beautifully crafted box covered in mysterious runes. With a sense of excitement, he inserts the golden key, the chest unlocking with a click, revealing a dazzling light from within. Yujun takes a deep breath, ready to uncover the incredible treasures that await inside. As Shin Yujun peers into the treasure chest, a soft, warm glow catches his eye. Nestled at the center of the chest is a radiant orange orb, the Long Age Siondan. This rare item, when consumed, grants an additional random characteristic, something highly coveted by every player. Yujun's eyes widen with excitement. Finding such an incredible item this early in his adventure is almost unheard of. The benefits of consuming it right away are immense, boosted stats that could greatly enhance his journey ahead. But just as Yu Jun is about to take a bite, he pauses, a thought crossing his mind. What if he waited? What if he held off until he could equip an item that increased his luck stat? That way, the chances of gaining an even more powerful characteristic from the orb would be much higher. Greed and strategy dance in his mind as he decides to save the Siondan for now, aiming to level up and find a luck-boosting item before using the orb's potential. With that plan set, Yujun's eyes light up with excitement as he fantasizes about more hidden loot. There could be other treasures lingering in this dungeon, maybe something equally valuable. Driven by curiosity and greed, he goes on a rampage, smashing urns, shattering pots, and breaking open every chest he can find in the underground maze. But after searching high and low, his luck runs dry. There's nothing else to be found. Disappointed but not disheartened, he heads back to the dungeon entrance and steps into the bright sunlight outside. Now it's time to move forward and finally touch the portal stone, claiming the glamorous rewards awaiting him for clearing the hell difficulty as a level one. Reaching out, his hand touches the stone, and in an instant, the magic activates, transporting him out of the forest. He reappears outside a towering, spiraling white structure, the Tower of Infinity. Yujun stares at it in awe, memories flooding back from his time playing the game. He distinctly remembers that finishing the tutorial forest was supposed to take him to Layton's village, the beginner area for players. Has the game's reality changed or just the settings? He wonders, feeling a strange sense of unease and curiosity. By now, he's reached over level 5 and the super novice set is automatically unequipped, leaving him with his basic gear. Curious about his progress, Yujun opens his status screen. What he sees leaves him gasping. Level 31. His stats have been significantly upgraded, and he's sitting on a whopping 90 unassigned stat and skill points. He can't believe how quickly he's leveled up. This is just from completing the tutorial. How can the tutorial alone grant so many levels? He marvels, struggling to wrap his head around it. Then, a series of blue screens pop up before him, flooding his vision with reward after reward. Loot pours into his inventory, and the thrill of progression fills his chest. But amid the congratulations and item drops, another message appears, one that catches his attention. You now have the authority to enter the intermediate tutorial. Yujun thinks to himself, could this be the exclusive privilege that Nell mentioned? If so, this gives him a shot to clear hell mode in the intermediate tutorial and snag even more powerful items. Excitement pulses through him as he opens the system menu to check his titles. Sure enough, the system has rewarded him with two new titles, Trailblazer, which increases all experience gained by 5%, and Tutorial Conqueror, which grants plus 7 to all stats. Each boost makes his path forward a little easier, and he grins as he clicks on the next reward, the legendary item box, glowing brilliantly in yellow. A smirk spreads across his face. He knows exactly what this box is, a treasure that can grant an ultra-rare, legendary-grade item of his choosing. He remembers the ridicule he once faced from other players, mocking him for spending nearly 5 million won on item boxes just like this. But all that noise fades now that he's in the game for real. 
Yujin considers saving the box for later, since legendary items often come with level restrictions. But, glancing at his nearly full inventory, he decides to open it right away. With anticipation, he unlocks the box and receives an item shimmering in every color of the rainbow, the legendary rainbow sticker. This item allows him to lower the level restriction on any piece of equipment by 100. Yujun's eyes widen. Given that he's level 31 now, this means he can instantly equip a level 131 item from his stash. Without wasting a moment, he opens the system screen to inspect his inventory and figure out what to use the sticker on. Logically, he should apply it to armor for better survivability. After all, staying alive is critical in this world. But as the old saying goes, the best defense is a good offense. His eyes lock onto a particular sword, Kyohem's long sword. It's been a while since he's wielded this beauty, and seeing it again feels like reconnecting with an old friend. The weapon stats flash across his screen, legendary. Attack power, 1070, plus 22 agility, slightly increases the power of attack skills. The sheer attack power far surpasses anything his novice equipment had, and it's exactly the kind of upgrade he needs. Yujun thinks back to his time grinding through War of the Gods. This was why levels mattered so much. All those legendary items he painstakingly collected as a player are finally within his reach. They just need the levels to back them up. And Shin Yujun is no casual gamer. He's willing to grind relentlessly to become the strongest player once again. With each level, he'll equip the necessary gear and reclaim his spot as the most powerful force in this world. As he mentally prepares for the long road ahead, Yujun reflects on what it means to be inside the War of the Gods. If this world truly mirrors the game's brutal reality, low-level beginners don't stand a chance. The world is riddled with monstrous creatures, treacherous dungeons, and near-impossible challenges. Only the brave, skilled, and, let's face it, lucky will be able to conquer this world. This is a game that pushed away most of its player base because of its grueling difficulty leaving only a few diehard veterans. A world where every step is dangerous and every battle could be your last. That's the war of the gods he knows, and it's the world he's now prepared to master, one swing of his sword at a time. The next day, Shin Yujin finds himself transported to a residential area outside the Tower of Infinity, designated for players below level 100. The place looks like an old, rundown neighborhood with brown buildings lining the area and he's conveniently dropped into a back alley like some NPC who didn't get the memo. He looks around, nobody in sight. Great, he thinks, summoned to an empty alley in a ghost town. Or so he thought. Down the alley, faint voices echo, and curiosity gets the better of him. Making his way to the main road, Yujun is immediately greeted by bustling streets filled with players of all sorts. Warriors decked out in shiny plate armor, wizards draped in robes that shimmer with enchantments. It's like an MMORPG fashion show. Yujun's eyes widen. What the heck, he mutters. He just cleared the tutorial, feeling like a king at level 31. And yet, the streets are absolutely swarming with players who look like they're leagues above him. It's like going to a costume party in your pajamas. The shock of seeing so many high-level players hits him hard. Back in the War of the Gods game on his computer, the streets were usually deserted, and finding another player felt like spotting a rare Pokemon. But here, it's packed. And they're not just there to chat. These players look tough like they've been grinding levels and gear for ages. How the heck did they level up so fast? He wonders, feeling a bit like a noob who missed a major XP event. As Yujun eavesdrops on passing conversations, he catches a juicy piece of gossip. A group of players whispers that dozens of people died in a B-ranked dungeon raid. Apparently, only those in highly organized guilds with crazy skills made it out alive. Rumor has it some of these top-tier players made it out by, well sacrificing their low-level friends to distract the monsters and make a clean getaway. Yikes. Of course, it's just hearsay. And now that these players are at the top, no newbie would dare question them about it. They also mentioned that these veteran players have been at it for over five years, grinding through high-level hunting grounds with insane drop rates while the newbies, who've only been around for a year or two, are stuck here, farming in the Tower of Infinity's lower levels. Yujun's jaw practically drops. Five years? He's only been here for three days. According to the Whispers, this all started with the Great Migration five years ago, a phenomenon where people on Earth who awakened player abilities were forcibly brought to this new realm. And it didn't just stop after the first migration, it kept happening year after year. So why now? Yujun thinks, why was I dragged here five years late? 
but well, no point dwelling on it. What matters now is that he's got one massive advantage, a killer inventory full of legendary gear. All he needs are the levels to match it, and he'll be catching up to these veterans in no time. First things first, find a good leveling spot, get the XP flowing, and dig up more information about that intermediate tutorial he unlocked. And the goal? Get to level 50 as fast as possible, which will let him wear all the accessories, rings, trinkets, amulets, you name it. And those will boost his stats even further. He grins, excited at the thought of becoming even stronger. As he walks through the crowded streets, the sheer number of players still baffles him. Back in the original War of the Gods, it was almost a miracle to bump into another player. Now, it's like a massively multiplayer parade out here. But this world is his game, and he's got tons of experience to make sure he's not left in the dust. Dungeons, skill names, effects, it all translates to this reality. And with all this knowledge, Shin Yujun is ready to play to win. Time to grind, baby. One thing that does surprise Yujun? The price of items. Apparently, even junk sells for a small fortune. He managed to sell an old, beat-up pair of army boots for a whopping 50,000 points. With that kind of cash, he won't need to worry about food and lodging for a long time. It's a pretty sweet deal considering he practically pulled those boots out of the trash. The economy here is wild. Items are ranked from common, the stuff nobody wants, to legendary, the stuff everyone drools over. If a player's got the skill, they can farm for mid-tier or high-tier items and make a killing in the market. With his newly acquired points, Yujun stocks up on tons of low-level potions, saving the high-grade ones for later emergencies. Better to be prepared than to blow through everything right away. Now that he's well-fed, well-rested, and well-equipped, it's time to start climbing the Tower of Infinity and catch up to those players who've been grinding here for five long years. There are many reasons why players choose to ascend the tower. For one, life gets real fancy as you climb. Higher floors mean more luxurious residential areas, exotic food, and lavish living spaces. But there's also a far more urgent reason, the demon god invasion. According to legend, if no one breaks through to the top of the tower within 15 years, all hell will break loose, literally. Every demon will spill into the real world, and if that happens, humanity doesn't stand a chance. So, no pressure or anything. Determined, Yujun steps into the dungeon on the first floor of the tower. His trial begins here. The environment is dark, damp, and crawling with monsters just waiting for a fight. Almost immediately, he encounters his first challenge. A pack of giant rats, their red eyes glowing ominously in the shadows. Oh great rats, just what I needed. With a swift combo of slice and dice, he quickly dispatches them. Easy enough for now, but Yujun knows that to make it to the higher floors, he'll have to carve his way through countless creatures like this. Back when he played War of the Gods, the tower had only 50 floors, but now that he's in this real-world version, he wonders how many floors there could possibly be. The thought is both thrilling and daunting. Endless levels mean endless opportunities, but also endless danger. Suddenly, he's ambushed by another giant rat lunging at him from the side. No big deal. His high-level gear deflects the weak attacks of these low-level creatures effortlessly. Still, Yujun reminds himself to stay on high alert. In this world, even the weakest monster could end him if he's careless. Because dying here doesn't mean respawning, it means game over for good. Venturing deeper, he stumbles into a dark area, the kind that makes your skin crawl. Out of nowhere, a sea of glowing red eyes lights up the shadows, staring right at him. How many of these things are there? He mutters, gripping his sword tighter. And then, a system alert blares across his vision. Enraged giant rat Koenche has appeared. In an instant, the dungeon erupts with movement. Millions of rats scurry toward him, their shrill squeaks filling the air. The sheer number of them is enough to make anyone want to turn tail and run. You've got to be kidding me, he groans. It feels like fighting the undead back in the tutorial forest all over again. Isn't this a bit much for the first floor? He gripes as he raises his sword, bracing himself for the onslaught. Looks like he's in for another long day. Time to put those rat-slaying skills to the test. 